Look, I understand your concern, my dear. But consider, Lydia will never be easy until she has exposed herself in some public place. And here is an opportunity for her to do so. At very little expense or inconvenience to her family. If you were aware, Father, of the very great disadvantage to us all, which must arise from Lydia's unguarded and imprudent manner, which has already arisen from it, I'm sure you would judge differently. Already arisen? Or does she frightened away some of your lovers? Oh, now, don't be cast down, Lydia. Such squeamish youths are not worth your regret. Oh, come, Lizzie. Indeed, you are mistaken. I have no injuries to resent. I speak of general, not particular evils. Our position as a family, our very respectability is called into question by Lydia's wild behavior. Excuse me, I must speak plainly. If you do not take the trouble to check her, she will soon be beyond the reach of amendment. Her character will be fixed as the most determined flirt that ever made herself and her family ridiculous. You know that Kitty follows wherever Lydia leads. Don't you see that they will be censured and despised wherever they are known? And that they will involve their sisters in their own disgrace? Does he, does he come here? Don't make yourself uneasy, my love. Wherever you and Jane are known, you must be respected and valued. And you will not appear to any less advantage for having a couple or, I may say, three very silly sisters. We shall have no peace at Longbourn if Lydia does not go to Brighton. Colonel Foster is a sensible man. And luckily, she's too poor to be an object to prey to a fortune hunter. Now, leave it now, Lizzie. I believe 